Hey everybody, welcome back. James here again with you on this warm and hot muggy Indiana day. And in this video, I want to go over the 22LR tuning portion. A lot of comments have rolled in on this unknown tuning method that I found. And I'm going to try to answer those the best way I can and show you and hopefully get you to understand this method a little bit better. Now part two, I showed how I did it with an air gun and it's the same way with a 22 rimfire. Now, the issue is you need to determine whether or not your barrel on your rifle, again, whether it's an air gun, rim fire, center fire, whatever it is, you need to determine where the barrel is pointing. And what I mean by that is, is the barrel drooping at the muzzle or is it pointing up? And in most cases, in the air guns, especially PCPs, the barrel is fastened from the top at back here by the breech so it lifts the muzzle up and that's why you can use regular rifle scopes without adjustable rings and get your scope dialed into the pellet now if that wasn't the case and the barrel was drooping you know most people have to either shim the scope ring in the back to tilt the scope down to meet the pellet trajectory or get adjustable rings or Again, like I said, it just depends on what the barrel is doing in your particular rifle. Uh, and that is why also, like I said before, and I'll say it again, this method answers for everything. And if you're adding something to the muzzle of your rifle, again, whether it's rim fire, center fire, air gun, whatever, if you're adding something at the muzzle, you're pulling that barrel down because of the weight. So most cases it helps in some cases it doesn't because again it just depends on whether your barrel is drooping or it's pointing up now in this particular case this is my savage mark ii f 22 lr and in this video i'm using the fioki 40 grain standard velocity also known as cci i think they're made by the same company i think cci makes those for fioki but anyway I went ahead and tuned this rifle because many have commented and asked, well, what about rimfire? Does it work? And the answer is yes. Now, again, I had to determine what the barrel was doing, or I should say where the barrel was pointing, whether it was pointing up or pointing down. And in this rifle, the barrel was pointing down compared to my scope. Now, as you've heard me mention, if you watch part one and part two, I found out that if you move the scope in relation with the barrel and the projectile trajectory, it will either decrease or increase your accuracy, or I should say group size. And what, do, what does that mean? Well, it means that if your scope is pointed one way and your barrel is pointing the other, downrange at a specific yardage for instance 50 yards has been my testing range in all my videos here and I'm going to show you 50 yards also in this video if the scope body or the angle of the scope itself this angle right here in relation to the barrel and the projectile downrange don't match the groups won't group good and and I mean good like you know 50 yards you should be pretty you should be shooting pretty decent. Uh, a lot of you know that I got this rifle and it shot all right. It wasn't the best I've ever seen. But then again, I got it tuned and this thing is putting out bug hole groups, almost one hole. And I got some shooting clips with this rifle to show you that I got it tuned.
cards back to back 22 lr fioki 40 grain also known as cci standard velocity now what did i have to do is the question and how did i determine that well come to find out guys this barrel was drooping and what that means is the tip of the muzzle here was pointing more down than the scope here and again like i said air guns most of the time the barrels point up and it's because this is such a long barrel and it's not mounted from the top it's not fastened in from the top of this receiver they have a pin a locking pin here i believe going across the receiver here just to keep the barrel in and there's probably a screw in there somewhere i've never really fully disassembled this rifle but with that said the tip here was pointing down or angling down away from the scope from the get-go and what does that mean well you see me in part one and part two either tilt the scope or bring it back on the rail if you don't have adjustable rings this rifle does not have adjustable rings so with the barrel pointing down the easiest thing to do is to move the scope forward your scope has to follow the way the barrel is pointing if it's pointing down you got to move the scope forward to meet up with that angle and if the barrel is pointing up and you're still not getting good group say for an air gun you move the scope rings back on the rail to meet up with your projectile trajectory downrange. and each round each projectile puts out a different trajectory they're all not the same So that is why I just stuck with one ammunition in this video, the 40 grain, even though I could spend the time and tune any bullet I want in with this rifle. The thing is, I want to show you an easy way to do that and figure it out with your own rifle. Because really, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I can do with my guns. If you're looking for more accuracy and more precision and better shooting groups out of your rifle, I'm going to show you how to do that out of your 22 here. Now, as I mentioned, this barrel was drooping or pointing down in relation to the scope. Now, the scope is set right here, and I have two levels I want to show you that I'm going to attach to the rifle and see if I can get a good view to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the scope is set up perfect. It, it's shooting great now. So I want to show you what that looks like when it's pretty much well set. And with that said, in most cases, the barrel should be angling up and the scope should be angling down. And what that means is the scope angle or optic angle should be farther down than the barrel. If you understand what I'm saying, the barrel should be pointed up and the scope should be pointed down. And it's not... It's not bad, it's not awfully, the angle is not that significant, but it is significant downrange, that's the thing. Now, now this, this gun, gun has been safety checked, checked and verified, just so you guys know. Okay, so hopefully you can see that good. The top level on the muzzle of the barrel here is almost center. And the scope is just tilted down a little bit because if I push that way downward, the scope will go up. So let me level the scope out in relation to the barrel now and show you. Yep, you can see the top level, I don't know how well you guys can see, but with the scope centered, the top level is just a hair above the scope. But that makes a huge significant difference down range, and again, this is tuning the scope for each projectile. And then, once I figure out where the projectile group's good at, and then I adjust my scope. I don't adjust my scope as I'm going on. Once the 
projectile meets the correct angle with the scope, it should group good. And when it does, then you change your scope to adjust the reticle, the turret, to meet up to that group for your point of aim to be the point of impact. I'm not resetting the scope to zero, mechanical zero, or anything like that. I'm just shooting it and determining where the perfect angle for the trajectory meets up with the scope body, the angle of the scope. And again, with the barrel drooping, I had to move the scope forward. Now originally, before I tuned this rifle, I was two notches back here. And when I first got this rifle, the scope and barrel were pretty much even. And that's not good, especially if you're using an ammunition that shoots decent. You want to find the right tune, the right angle of the scope to match up with the trajectory of the load you're using. Because you can't change the velocity of a center fire rim fire if you're using factory loads. All you can do is just hope for the best. Well now, you can shoot your gun and determine the exact angle where the scope needs to meet up with the barrel and the trajectory downrange. And this, again, works on anything. Works on rim fire, center fire, air guns. And I did the testing with an air gun, obviously, but the reason why I did that was to keep the setting the exact same throughout the testing. Because a lot of air guns are not adjustable. Now, again, this is why you're tuning the air gun to shoot better. You're getting it tuned in, not only to group good, but it's because of the scope angle itself aligning to the trajectory downrange. And the key is to keep the projectile stable because if it's already tilted in flight on impact, it's not going to group good because it's destabilized or starting to destabilize in flight. You always want it to stay stable and if it flies true and really good and groups good, it's because you hit the right angle with your scope and the barrel and the ammunition you're using. And this is why 22 lr can be one of the most pickiest firearms to shoot if you're trying to get the tightest groups ever. Now, again, you could try different ammunition like the old way, but this is the new way. And, you know, you can do any ammunition you want. A lot of my rifles, I've already hit that angle. And again, it was just by trial and error, like my Ruger 1022 factory rifle. A lot of you have seen that in the past videos where I was hitting all the way up to 150 yards. A little one inch spinner and it was way way under a one inch group and at a hundred yards it was shooting about half MOA or a half inch groups even with high velocity again this doesn't matter you get the gun tuned in to the angle of the barrel and the trajectory of the projectile downrange you'll be set so I hope you understand this a little better before I go I just want to give you again a little short explanation you want your scope tilted down and you want your barrel pointed up in any in any setup whether again it's firearm or not or air gun because if your barrel is drooping you need the scope to follow that you need to push the scope forward if you're not using adjustable rings and now if the barrel is pointing up already you need to move the scope back because what's happening is the pellet's coming up, arcing, and then turning in the air like this and hitting the target. You want the scope and the pellet and your barrel to stay almost at the right angle on impact at the set distance you're shooting. And again, this has been a 50-yard testing throughout all the videos I've done. So I hope you understand this method a little better. I'm trying to answer the comments as the best as possible. I appreciate you watching as always, and I hope to see you on the next one.